Hey everyone, it's Ivan from kitbadger.com. Out here for a first look at a pretty neat little project I've been working on with some help from friends over at Helix 6 Precision in Leopold. Big picture, we'll look at kind of the what and then dip into the why. And so, well, the mini fix. Honestly, one of the coolest guns. I had the opportunity to go out to Q, New Hampshire, and actually build my mini fix. I think it was probably the first one in the wild, serial number six, pretty cool, and chambered in 300 blackout. Shot it a bunch, had a ton of fun with it. They also offered one in 224 Valkyrie. I don't know who dropped the ball on that as far as ammo, but the ammo did not come out in time quality ammo did not come out in time to really become what it probably could have been and consequently 224 Valkyrie kind of died but I ended up since I had the 300 blackout mini fix ended up actually getting a 556 barrel for it and shot that a bunch it was a lot of fun last year my youngest son had me turn 10 went down big game hunting shot his first deer with it beautiful little buck and pretty big buck actually and it was really cool really neat gun and there's a 224 bolt for it so i like kind of cool projects so i reached out to q and i was like hey can i get a barrel extension in a 224 bolt face please and i ended up getting them and this project's kind of been a long time coming so a friend of mine, John, owns Helix 6 Precision. They make pretty amazing carbon fiber barrels with some unique stuff going on. Like one thing I guess worth mentioning is you can cut and thread their barrels. So a lot of carbon fiber barrels, if you want a 20 inch barrel, you have a 20 inch barrel. And if later you realize what you really want and need is a 16 inch barrel because of where you go and how you shoot, now you need to order a 16 inch barrel. You can actually cut and thread these, which is pretty cool. And some pretty neat stuff going on. But ended up getting a 6.8 SPC barrel, or 6.8 SPC2 barrel, from John over at Helix 6 Precision. Why 6.8 SPC? You're like, that is a pretty obscure cartridge. Kind of. It honestly, as I understand it, basically did not end up going through the selection for a new cartridge for like military weapons because of a lot of politics involved. But it's pretty neat throwing a much bigger projectile, 110, 115 grains out of largely just a AR platform. Swap the bolt, magazine, and barrel and you're in business. Kind of like 300 Blackout. Exception kind of in the magazine. Can usually get away with AR max. But by all accounts, pretty devastating as far as terminal ballistics on target. So I was like, that would be kind of a fun project. So ended up getting a barrel and basically the idea of making kind of a little lightweight hunting rifle for, again, my youngest son to go shoot and for me to probably shoot a lot too because I think it'll be fun. And yeah, chambered in 6.8 SPC. So with that, here I am. Really light, mini fix, 16 inch Helix 6 Precision barrel. And since it's a flat shoulder, I wasn't gonna try and like torque a cherry bomb on there. Right here is one of the, I believe it's Reardon Defense, Reardon Manufacturing rather. Their muzzle brake, which is timed, but taper, threads, basically fits if you're gonna put a plan B or any type of can been using this guy on it and then I wanted to I wanted to kind of try out a different optic and that optic is this right here which is the Leopold VX5 HD 3 to 15 by 45 so it's that what's unique about it honestly it's one of their lightest optics that still has a mill reticle for me personally and it's one of those like you end up learning something and you end up rolling with it. So if MOA is your thing, cool. Personally, like mill, makes more sense. Most of the people I shoot with, we speak the same language. 
So this actually has a mill reticle, like usable. My boys have been using mill, makes sense. And what's really cool about it is it's really lightweight. Three to 15 second focal plane. And you have a zero stop. You also have a turret that locks and you can go ahead and dial if you need to. So crank this thing all the way up to 15 and you can actually use the reticle in there or you can go ahead and dial depending on distance. Because again, if you're at 10, your reticle isn't true as far as mills within your reticle versus the world. So took this thing out the other day for the first time. First things first, wanna make sure we get this thing zeroed. So initially just bore sighted it. Essentially looking down the barrel at my target, IPSC target down there at 100 yards, and then dialing on my scope so that more or less what my scope was looking at lined up with my barrel till I felt pretty confident about it. Then since I was gonna shoot suppressed and I wanna gather some data, went ahead and threw my suppressor on there a trash panda by Q. And then again, going back to gathering data, I ended up using my magneto speed, getting that thing set up on there. So not only was I going to put rounds down range and hopefully get this thing zeroed quickly, but I was also gonna get some data, those velocities from the ammo I was shooting, which was just some S and B, I think 110 grain. So with all that set up, started firing a couple rounds down range. With my first round on the paper, albeit a little high and to the right, I was able to make some adjustments, bring it back down. Definitely overcorrected a little bit, but shot, I think a total of maybe four more rounds, ultimately getting pretty close to exactly my point of aim and using those five shots to go ahead and gather that data I was looking for with respect to velocity. Of course, your zero isn't necessarily your zero when you have something hanging off the end of your barrel or suppressor in this case. So I ended up taking the magneto speed off and went ahead and shot a five shot group again with that S and B. That one kind of low left, that was absolutely me, jerk that. But honestly, pretty happy for the gun pretty much out of the box. That was basically round six through 10 out of this gun and yeah after that i was like well i might as well play around and have some fun since i'm already here at the range so plugged my stuff into the ballistic app and basically found firing solutions for two three and 380 and at each of those yard lines there was six inch hanging gong and proceeded to get after it initially holding in the reticle After I got my hits in the reticle, went ahead and dialed the dope onto my scope and sent it. really fun to basically straight out the gate, get this thing zeroed, get some dope, and shoot out a distance. Unfortunately, that range there doesn't go much further, so got out as far as I could go. I chucked one at 400 too, which was easy because there is a 400 yard target, but it's bigger than the smaller one at 380. Really fun though. And then, because I was about out of that s and and I'd ordered a bunch of PPU ammo. I don't even know how to pronounce that. It's a lot of consonants and a couple of vowels from wherever overseas. 
but I was like, I need to get data for this. So threw the magneto speed back on here, went ahead and shot it. It was definitely moving slower than my S and B that I was shooting. And went ahead and got this thing zeroed in fairly hasty zero. But yeah, now I have data for, I think I bought a case of like 500 rounds of that. So have data for that and I have a pretty cool gun that I'm looking forward to putting a lot of time in with. As far as this muzzle brake, I might do some shooting with it. Here's the thing, once you start shooting suppressed, you're like, why do I wanna shoot anything loud? But it's on here, so it is what it is. Pretty excited though. I, because I like shooting, am gonna probably shoot this a lot. And since I have a bunch of ammo for it, I'll end up going out with my son, my youngest, and give him the opportunity to shoot this a lot as well. Both prone, because we got bipods, and then arc rail adapter from Sawtooth Rifles, so he can shoot off of a tripod, which is especially nice hunting, especially with younger people, where this is a really light, handy rifle, but when you're 11 years old, it does not seem as light as when you're an adult. So 2022 fall, we'll be down there hunting deer, probably down with my buddy Sparky, Joker's Wild Outdoors, M2D Camo Properties, really cool place to go down and hunt. And yeah, pretty excited about my son taking game, hopefully with this rifle this season and for me to shoot it a bunch too. Oh, and lastly, something else I ended up picking up because haven't really dipped into the 8.6 world, some different magazines, Duramag, C Products, and ASC, Ammunition Storage Components. So I'll end up seeing how these magazines do. But when I get more time with all of this, probably sometime after this year's hunting season, and I get the chance to just shoot this a lot more, end up bringing you a full review. Overall, I'm really excited about this project and in part, one, it's a cool gun, it's custom, it's mine, and well, gets to be my son's and I get a share in that experience. So pretty much winning across the board. Pretty excited. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.